Welcome everybody to a historic 2021 Amachi virtual pilgrimage. I'm Carlene Tonegoshi Tinker and my co-host is Ricky Ajima. We're here to introduce you to an amazing program that very talented and interested people have put together. While we can't come together in person, you're able to join us online. And that way you can participate as a pilgrim. It's a way to connect with others who are pilgrims. And it also is a chance for you to see what is being done to bring the attention to others about the incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II. Obviously a very important chapter in American history. That's absolutely correct, Carlene. And welcome again, everyone. Ever since the first pilgrimage in 1975, activities have begun with a visit to the Amachi Cemetery, where we typically observe a memorial ceremony performed by a Buddhist priest and a Christian minister. The cemetery is maintained by the students of the Amachi Preservation Society, led by Mr. John Hopper. The ceremony honors descendants' ancestors, as well as members of the 442nd Regiment and others who lost their lives in World War II. This ceremony is one of the principal reasons for survivors and descendants to attend the pilgrimage to Amachi. It is an emotional experience, not only for the participants, but also for those watching on the sidelines. Thank you very much for coming to the Amachi virtual service. I'm Frank Miyazawa. I'll be your MC and introduce the uh, people that will conduct the service. We make the pilgrimage in memory of the 120 people that passed away while they were in internment. and also to remember the 31 soldiers from Omachi that were killed in action. I would like to introduce Reverend Noritaka Imada of the Tri-State Denver Buddhist Temple who will begin the service. and the Amachi Preservation Society students who will do the floral tribute. Shall 
症状三苦妙、交際主役難、回避遅延言、滅死困も難、閉塞症悪道、通達全集も、高層上満足、異様老事法、日月修熟期天候論不言一周解放増高生苦毒法上王大修熟説法四死苦苦用一切部具足修徳法元年失常万徳意三害を女仏無下地津田未不祥願が食えり投資最初損死願にゃこか大戦の感動国書天人、道地妙家、なまんなぶ、なまんなぶ、Hi everyone, this is Reverend Noritaka Imara from Tri State Denver Buddhist Temple, a Buddhist minister of the Buddhist Church of America. I'm really honored to be part of virtual pilgrimage program of Amachi internment campsite. I was born in Hiroshima, Japan. I moved to Colorado in 2019. So I'm still learning the history. Of the United States. So today, to remember the history, I'd like to pay homage and share some words as a Buddhist. I'd like to share the words written by Shinran Shonin, the founder of Shin Buddhism. Those who have been born first guide those who come later, and those who are born later join those who were born before. So, this expresses gratitude to ancestors and makes me feel the responsibility to correctly share the history to the next generation. 
When I was growing up in Hiroshima, Japan, I heard many stories about war from the people who have experience. Also, since I moved to the United States, I heard some stories during the war. It is hard to hear and imagine about wartime. However, when I hear the history of war, it reminds me of the importance of human life. So I feel I have a responsibility to share those stories correctly to the next generation. And one of the reasons why history should be shared with the next generation is to prevent repeating the same history. No matter how much time humans spend, the essence of humans has not changed. Because as long as humans live, greed, anger, and ignorance always exist with us. So we have to remember the history to not make the same suffering in the future. The symbol of Shin Buddhism in Hiroshima Aki district is a symbiotic bird. This bird has two different heads for one body. One day, the two heads started to hate each other. And finally, one head tried to kill the other one by feeding the poisonous nuts. However, both of them died because they shared only one stomach. This story tells us the importance of living a life while helping each other. Humans also have our own heads on the only one earth. So it is better to help each other instead of hate each other. The hateful mind causes suffering. The mind of hate or anger always comes from inside of myself. To prevent that, it is important to try to know the feelings of the others. I remember a poem by Reverend Towey so I will leave it. You cannot grab water, but you can scoop it. Also, you cannot grasp the feelings of others, but you can embrace them. So he tells us, humans cannot completely understand others' feelings, but to contribute to world peace, we can try to know the feelings of each different head. History always tells us many things. I will follow them and guide those who will be born later. I like to express my deep gratitude and respect to all who were in Amachi internment campsite and who protect the tradition and identity. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I'd like to close remarks with Gashou. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Nob, Namo Nob, Namo Nob, Namo Nob, Namo Nob, Namo Nob. Next will be Reverend Leah Coleman of the Simpson United Methodist Church. Hi everybody, this is Pastor Leah and I'm with Simpson United Methodist Church. It is an honor to be with you today on this pilgrimage. It has been said that memory itself is a funny thing. Memory is not always reliable and it can filter the way in which we view our world. That is the importance of having an annual pilgrimage. We are able to remember the past, remember and hear the stories from those that we love, and then to live forward into a new future. We can learn from the past. Today's service is important as we honor the saints who have gone before us. They have helped to help all of us as individuals live into a new future. 
We thank all of those who have passed away, but we also thank you as we continue to work together in the future, to continue to honor those and share their stories. Because as we share stories, we teach others about the past. We teach others how not to relive the atrocities of the past. And most importantly, we live together in a shared future, a future in which all are honored and all are respected. May we go forth from this service remembering that we are a body of Christ bound together out of love so that we can share the love of Christ with each other and future generations. May it be so. Amen. Thank you very, very much for coming and for participating and helping us to remember the people that were here at Amachi that have passed on. Thank you very much. Amachi is a sacred and powerful place. The memorial reminds us of this and the importance of preservation for future generations. Now we invite you to join Mr. John Hopper on a driving tour of the site and of the museum. Mr. Hopper is the leader and originator of the Amachi Preservation Society, which is a group of students that work to maintain and to preserve the history of Amachi. They started in the early 1990s and they have continued every year and you can see the fruits of their labor. John will be taking us on a tour of the other features of the site today, as well as the museum. And for anyone who has met Mr. Hopper, you will all agree with me. He is one of the most quiet, but hardworking, patient and humble people I've ever met. Amachi and the community are so lucky to have him. I totally agree, Carlene. In the summer of 2014, I met Mr. John Hopper and his brilliant Amachi Preservation Society or APS students. Mr. Hopper, like Carlene said, is the most humble, and hardworking Grenadian and Southeastern Coloradan celebrity and leader you'll ever meet. Thank you, Mr. Hopper, for your immense care for the land and preservation of our country's dark past. Through his leadership by action, Mr. Hopper empowers his students and the larger Grenada community to pursue their passions while honoring their roots. I first met APS students when I was in high school as a DU Amachi intern. Grenada High students have served as the primary caretakers and curators of the Amachi Museum. They gave me a tour of the museum, and I was so impressed by their knowledge and passion for keeping this history alive. If you are an Issei, Nisei, or even a Sansei Japanese American, you most likely know of the great Pat Suzuki, my great aunt, who was one of the first Asian Americans on Broadway and also an Amachi incarcerate. While it's rare that folks my generation and generations beyond know of my Auntie Pat, the APS students lit up as soon as I told them of my relation to her. I grinned at their excitement and passion for preserving our collective history, and I'm inspired by their social justice advocacy. We're all impressed and grateful for everything that the APS students have continued to do for this site. As advocates, they do presentations, as I said earlier, in local schools about Amachi and the history of Japanese incarceration. They're also knowledgeable guides who provide wonderful tours of the museum and the site itself. If they're not available, there are ways that you can actually tour the site yourself. There are self-guided tours that are available online at amachi.org. While on the driving tour, you'll see barracks, concrete foundations, which is unusual because 
That is not necessarily the case at other camps. You can identify places such as the co-op, the post office, the high school, and tour the many restored parts of the site that have been completed recently. The water tower, which was made up of original parts as well as reconstructed parts, a barrack, a guard tower, and recently uh, they moved a barrack that had been used as a warehouse in the town of Grenada back to its original site, and that was completed in 2018. And coincidentally, that is where I attended preschool. Thank you, Carleen. That's such a powerful connection. Following the site tour, we typically visit the Amachi Museum in Grenada. The museum holds a splendid display of artifacts, photos, and books. In addition, there is an interactive map for pilgrims to locate their family's barracks and mark these barracks with bright pins. It's amazing to see how many people have actually pinned the map. Touring the museum can be a highlight for many because they have the opportunity to chat with each other, examine the museum's rich collection of artifacts, and recall memories of being incarcerated at Amachi. Well, now everybody, let's join John Hopper as he tours the site and takes us to the new museum. You are in for a wonderful ride. My name is John Hopper and I run the uh, Amachi Preservation Society, so we take care of this whole area. We're at the main kiosk at the main gate, and uh, this is a map of Amachi, so that when visitors come, they can look at where they're at. This is currently where we're at right here. We're only uh, about less than a quarter of a mile off of uh, Highway 50, and then that way people can then take the uh, main street and they can go on a driving tour, which would you know, you'll pass uh, signs everywhere and just keep going, and, and it just takes you all over Amachi. All right, we're at the rec building that we just had moved up here about a little less than two years ago. It was underneath the uh, water tower in the town of Grenada at one time, and this was used as our maintenance shop in Grenada. They brought it back, put it down on the exact foundation. This is the 11F rec building, and they just finished that last June. If you're looking for uh, one of the buildings that is the most original to Amachi, this is it right here. This particular building, they did have a preschool in it on the back side, and the front side is the office. Let's go into the office first. Because of the virus, really nobody has ever seen the inside of this building. So actually as a, a virtual tour, it's actually pretty good. The office, it's a big enough space, they probably did some, some other things in here as well. So it's kind of unique that we actually have this rec building still and is mostly new. But on the other side, well, I'll show you the beams that actually are the original beams that were in it. These are uh, the original locks, the old, old type of locks. You can lock on the outside and people, you know, you know be locked in basically if they had it this way. But this is the old style uh, lock, lock key that goes in here and would lock it as well from the inside. So. It's a real cool little lock-up set. And there you would lock it just like that. That's the original lock. That's the athletic field. That's where they would have been playing football and baseball. This is exactly what it looked like. In fact, that's the exact brick that was in there. It's on its original foundation. So this is the uh, door to get into the preschool room. This is the main room. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger, and it's a uh, original potbelly stove that would have been in a rec building or a mess hall. We had to take it apart to get it in here, so we still got a lot of work to do to get it back to what it used to look like. 
We did get an interpretive grant to put furniture back. Our ag department will uh, build the small little picnic tables that preschoolers would have, add a scrap lumber. On this side, you can see where the original beams are still used. These are the original beams back all the way from 1942, all the way down. You can see these are all original 42 beams, again, on the original foundation. And then this brick was matched as closely as they could. We have ants coming in all the time, but that's exactly what uh, they, they had, had uh, back in the 40s. Ants coming in, scorpions coming in, you name it, they were coming in. Again, another original beam. And these are the historical, how they would have locked as well. To open up. And then it would open up the double doors to that parquet floor. This is the 12H barrack. This was reconstructed on the original foundation several years ago. This is a lot older than the uh, rec building. We have a move-in room for tourists and visitors. When we do tours here, I like to tell people that this catty corner here is uh, James, James A. Michener's uh, wife. Uh, lived right there, his third wife. Again, on the original foundation, it has uh, coal boxes out here. These are, they would, they would have put the coal in them. And then you lift up, uh, put your pail down there and you lift this up to get the, uh, the coal that would come out of it, so. The, these are the two apartment rooms and I'm going to show you what they would have moved into on uh, this, this side, so. This is what the, it would look like. Straight Celotex, no insulation whatsoever. Closet wasn't done. Um, wooden army cots. That's an original potbelly stove. You would have a pail here as well. But this is, uh, this would have been the family room. And this is it. A potbelly stove, a couple cots, pail, light. Extremely hot in the summer and extremely cold in the winter. But they would have had a screen and you could have opened uh, a little bit. But uh, yeah, this is the, the style that was up here. So there's another, another room on this wall, and another room, and another room, and another room. So if we go this direction, on the end, this would be more for either a single couple or bachelors. You know, these chairs were actually made out of matching, that's why they're in here. There were times that you have big, big families, they would allow them to have the in room and that room. You had to have a huge family, up to eight to 10, just in here or more sometimes. Just depending on how the family is and how much how much room there was. The water tower. This uh, farmer in the area, he said, you know, I know where that water tower is and you should probably get it because the, the man that had got it from Amachi just passed away and found out that it was 22 miles exactly that way out in the middle of nowhere on a ranch. And it was used as a water tank for stock. 
because it's a wooden water tower. We thought it would be cool to be able to get it back. You know, if I call for things, people just kind of blow me off. So I always have students call. It's harder to say no to a kid. I put it to one of my students and he started making all these calls until he found the daughter. But she said, you know what, if you want it, you just get it off. And uh, they were able to get a grant to get a company out there, take it apart. They redid it all and brought it back and put it up. And the, the wood actually came from Canada, the base of the wood. But the, underneath the water tower, there's an original beam. So they found all the beams out there when they, they took the water tower off. They put the water tower back on the original blocks and everything fit. One mistake would have cost thousands of dollars, but nope, it all fit together just like a glove. Walk towards the guard tower. They, they had to reconstruct this off of pictures and they gave it to a architect who then built a, a scale model. And from that scale model, they put it back up. That light would go around. See the ladder inside, that ladder would be brought, you see there's a landing there. So when they got up there, they would take that ladder up in with them. And then you'd have a ladder that would go up to that second landing. That would stay, it was permanent. You can see where the, the foundations are still there for where that ladder would have been permanent. Those are original tie downs. They found the original tie downs still in the, in the dirt. Hello, my name is Jonathan Rink and I am a member of the Amachi Preservation Society. The Amachi Preservation Society is a group of individuals that is run through the school to run the Amachi Museum. The goal of the Amachi Preservation Society is to educate and inform others about the tragedy that happened here at Camp Amachi. We are currently in the new museum. We just relocated from across the street. Every class period we would come over and slowly move stuff piece by piece and then me and my friend Dominic worked here over the summer and we moved a lot of the stuff from the museum to over here. My favorite artifact is probably the letterman's jacket and the football helmet because I'm a sportsy kind of person and it's really interesting to see the helmets that they wore back in the day. How did Amachi get its name? You know, there's one of the ironies of Amachi in itself because Amachi uh, the Native American woman who was married to John Prowers, which is the name of our county. Her father was actually killed at Sand Creek during the Sand Creek Massacre. Her, her father's name was Chief Lone Bear. The reason Amachi was named, the, the Grenada Relocation Camp was actually named Amachi, was because of the proximity of Grenada, the town of Grenada, and the Grenada Relocation Camp, which is about a half a mile from here. The other problem was in the 1940s, they didn't have zip codes on letters. So to sort mail, you had to look at names. And when you're trying to sort seven and a half thousand people between 500 people, it was, it was too hard. They designated a post office at the Grenada Relocation Camp and they called it Amachi. Hi, I'm Dominic Coleman, and this is some of the luggage that was used at Amachi. This special case, suitcase was found at a flea market by Mr. Clint Coster, and the family that used this suitcase was the Hoshiyama family. Right over here is some sake wine. Some of them brewed it locally at the camp. Right here is an interactive soy sauce container. It is over 70 years old, and you can still smell the soy sauce that was once held in there. The silkscreen shop of Amachi was one of the most successful enterprises out of uh, this whole area in the, mid in the Midwest of the United States. You had some outstanding artists from Los Angeles area that uh, made 
uh, prints for numerous objects that they actually had throughout Amachi, but they also printed up 250,000 posters for the U.S. military. Some of them are very, very rare, as a matter of fact. And we have tons of examples of the silk screens. In fact, this bottom one, we actually had to fight for this one off of eBay. Hi, my name is Ivan Yanez, and today I'll be showing you guys a no-no letter. The reason this is a no-no letter is because the Nisei were asked a questionnaire, question 27 and 28, and they were asked if on 27 if they're willing to serve for the U.S. military, and 28 if they're willing to forswear their allegiance to Japan. So the reason this envelope is so important is because the internees, they're supposed to go to Tule Lake and to San Francisco Harbor to go straight to Japan, but they didn't. They ended up going all the way to New York, as you can see in this letter, the New York cancel stamp. And then they would go all the way to the Cape of Good Hope, down to South Africa, South Africa, and then to Japan. So they took the long way there. And you can see the censorship of this envelope too. It reads, the censor will probably censor a lot of this letter if it even reaches you. This is probably one of the rarest artifacts in this museum and one of the most rarest artifacts in the United States as well because of what it means and how, how bold it is. My name is Bailey Hernandez and this is a recreation of how it would look inside of one of the Amachi barracks. This army blanket, cot, and wood fire stove back there were all issued to every single barrack. Stove over there was not used for cooking, it was more or less used for heating due to there being a mess hall. This crib, that stand, and the drawer and shelves over there were all handmade by Amachi internees who took the scrap wood, the leftovers of making the camp, and repurposed it for useful things that would actually help them here. And that paneling over there was taken from Block 11F. This display here is dedicated to everything that would be a part of the 442. And the 442 was a regiment entirely made up of Japanese Americans. And many Japanese Americans willingly fought in it before they were starting to be drafted. Many of them had volunteered because they wanted to prove themselves to the American people to say, hey, we are Americans and we're just as willing to lay down our lives. And the motto for 442 was go for broke because, you know, it was all or nothing. These here are the patches of the 442 and they have the insignia on them, which is a hand holding up a torch. And these here are buttons that would be given to internees to allow them to be able to leave the camp for a short amount of time and then come back. This was a picture of the military intelligence service. Hi, my name is Alice P and I'm also part of the Machi Preservation Society. This is a congressional gold medal that was given to the 442 in 2010 for their work in the military. 21 members of the 442 got the Medal of Honor and one recipient was from Amachi. His name is Kiyoshi Murinaga, and he was killed in action in Italy, saving his battalion from an attack. I'm Vanessa Ayala, part of the Amachi Preservation Society. These are Fukunosuke Kasumi's paintings. Kasumi is in the art of gamen, and this portrait, he was painting this picture here and thanks to his granddaughter that we have so many other paintings. This one here is the station that was here in Grenada. This one here was from Cohen Ranch. And this painting here, it's here in Grenada. And as you can tell, there's that red building here down on Main Street. He has many other paintings as well. Here's a portrait of him. These paintings are uh, also of Kasumi's. This is a good one because it, it shows a Christmas scene inside the mess hall 
and Amachi uh, with people back there uh, cooking and serving. And this one is of the Obon Festival. It's pretty, it's pretty cool stuff. I think it's really amazing. Like, he was really good artist. My name is Caitlin Balka. We get stuff sent to us here at Amachi all the time, this being one of our newest pieces. This was sent to us by Cynthia Hada. Her mother-in-law was interned at, the, at Amachi, and her father made this sewing cabinet. So we're gonna unbox it. This is the sewing cabinet. It has five drawers. All the paintings that you see on it were all hand painted. This email says, my mother-in-law was interned at Amachi. Her father made her a sewing cabinet out of a wood crate with five drawers and hand painted it with birds. Inside of one of the drawers is the inscription, from Grandpa Fujita, made in concentration camp, 1944. The new museum looks really great. I can hardly wait to see it in person and hope that you will get a chance to do that as well soon. I hope so too, and I can't wait to go back. So I hope everyone also enjoyed getting a look at the site itself during the driving tour. Being able to drive on the same roads that were used when the camp was open and explore everything that's still left behind like barracks foundations, is a truly memorable experience. At a typical in-person pilgrimage, we would finish the pilgrimage with a potluck lunch at the Grenada High School. This is hosted by the people of Grenada, as well as the Amachi Preservation Society students. The potluck will feature maybe an address by the mayor of Grenada, a keynote speaker, um, scholarship awards, that's a big time activity. There are several of the students who are awarded scholarships and a fond farewell. Usually the pilgrims will bathe farewell at the door waiting for the, is their bus. But this year, 2021 Amachi virtual pilgrimage doesn't stop here. There's more exciting programming to come. Yes, definitely. And even though we can't physically be together in person, we look forward to virtually meeting you, engaging with you, sharing our stories, and hopefully hearing some of yours. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today, and we'll look for you online.